baseball has no shortage of history. Seven decades of games make for a long walk down memory lane. Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Swung out and missed a perfect game. Listen carefully, and one can hear the echoes of some unbelievable moments. If you have a sombrero, throw it to the sky. Pieces of our pastime that are recalled and recounted, thanks in part to the words of a man who was so often there. How do you score as we go to Chicago? As the calendar turns to autumn, these moments and memories become all the more resonant. But you must reach your peak in October. Got it. Don Larson, a perfect game in a World Series. If you want to raise amber brows above eyes that have seen it all. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Who will deliver the next unforgettable performance? Who will be at the center of the story told and retold for generations to come? Dates with destiny aren't written in advance. The drama is unscripted, but they are out there. Next, I remember when moment will come. They always do. High fly ball into right field. She is gone. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. Even Vin Scully never called the Cubs in a World Series. The last time that happened was 1945. The last time they won it, as even casual baseball fans know, 1908. As another capacity crowd files in, many of them hoping, some of them praying, that this is finally the year. They had the best record in baseball with 103 wins. They got off to a good start in October by winning game one last night against the Giants, one to nothing. As we welcome you back to this telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico with John Smoltz and Ken Rosenthal. I'm Bob Costas. Well John it's a good feeling to be up one nothing to be at home and to have the ERA leader Kyle Hendricks on the mound tonight if you're Joe Madden. Yeah and if you haven't seen him pitch StatCast powered by Amazon Web Services is going to give you an inside look of what Kyle Hendricks possesses and what he does is he commands a sinker on both sides of the plate. It looks like a ball. It comes back over the plate. He ties up hitters with the best of them. This changeup is so deadly because it starts off the fastball and disappears. He's going to throw in a curveball that he can throw for a strike at any time. Maybe not the greatest pitch, but it's a pitch they have to look for. And I think for Kyle Hendricks, the one thing that you know is he does not hit the ball. Beating the hitters do not hit the ball that firmly. His exit velocity is one of the best in the game. His sinker just does not allow the hitter to barrel the ball up. They get weak grounders. This great defense of the Cubs. He plays right into it. Watch this changeup. Starts up, finishes down. If he's going to be successful tonight, it's going to be the same theme. Fastballs down, changeups mess the timing of the hitter. Kyle Hendricks, don't look at the miles per hour to see success. Look at the movement and the lack of power coming off the bat. His opponent tonight, the former Cub, Jeff Samarja. A career sub 500 pitcher 12 and 11 this year but during the last month of the regular season his breaking stuff was more effective which sets up the fastball better. Yeah absolutely he's a power guy at 95 96 but if he doesn't get his breaking ball or touch pitches over these Cub hitters which beat a lot of people this year are going to have their way with him. So for Jeff Samarja that curveball second time through the lineup is going to be huge. So the table has been set when we come back. We'll run down the lineups and we'll have the first pitch game two from Wrigley Field on deck.
sponsored by Geico. More than 100 players in the major leagues hit 20 or more home runs this season. None of them was a member of the San Francisco Giants. Brandon Belt led them with 17. Now, of course, they won the World Series in 2010, 12, and 14 without a 30 home run man. But this year, they didn't have anyone hit more than 17, and they have had trouble scoring, especially of late. Hendricks, 16 and 8, more importantly, led the majors in ERA at 2.13. This is his third year in the big leagues, all of them with the Cubs. Promising start in 2014 at 7 and 2, ERA of 2.5. Last year regressed a bit to 8 and 7, ERA about 4. But this year it's all come together, and John, you were among the first people to mention the comparison between him and Greg Maddox. Of course, Maddox did it for a sustained period of time, and that's why he's in the Hall of Fame. But this year, at least, Hendricks has conjured up memories of Maddox. Absolutely. The, the movement on his sinker, he's got a four-seamer as well, but the changeup, the sinker changeup combination and the curveball are similar to Maddox. Maddox learned how to pitch in this very ballpark, learned how to cut it, sink it, change speeds, and he had tremendous success, as we all know, on his way to a Hall of Fame career. The center fielder Denard Span stands in, hit 266 for the year. Ball one, the plate umpire is Alan Porter, Larry Vanover at first, Marvin Hudson at second, the crew chief John Hirschbeck is at third, six man crew in the postseason, Todd Titchener right field line, Mike Paczynski left field line. So here's the here's the dilemma the Giants have. You want to be aggressive because Kyle Hendricks throws a lot of strikes. But the problem with being aggressive on a sinker is it could be a lot of quick outs. You still have to pick one out that you like. But a look for the Giants to be aggressive as much as they can early off of that two seam fastball. Two balls and a strike. A real Jekyll and Hyde act this season for the Giants. They had the best record in the game at the All Star break, even better than the Cubs, and led the Dodgers by eight and a half in July. Then they were 12 games under 500, staggered toward the finish line in the second half. This one is slashed down the left field line, and it will drop foul in the bullpen area. But they managed to sweep the Dodgers in San Francisco in the last series of the regular season, eked out the second wild card spot, and had that guy ready to go against Noah Syndergaard for Bruce Bochy in the wild card game. And here they are once again. And those who believe in omens know that this is an even year. 2010, 12, 14, here they are in October of 2016. The 2 2 pitch. Hit hard down the right field line and foul. There is a bit of a breeze tonight, but nothing like what we saw last night. Yeah, it's an opposite wind, and certainly pitchers know firsthand when they step out here, watch BP, it affects how you're going to attack the hitters. You certainly could change your uh, whole game plan based on the wind, and that wind is from right to left. Last night, it was from left to right. Span at the plate. Belton Posey to follow in the top of the first. And a pop into shallow left. In comes Zobris to take it. Well, the keys to the game, I think, without stating obvious with uh, Mr. Hendricks here, down in the zone. There's nobody better at getting weak contact and down in the zone. Now the miles per hour, the reason that's a big thing is because this kind of game can can have a, a jolt of adrenaline. He does not need to throw the ball over 90 miles an hour. So to keep those miles per hour back to normal and then 1.32 at home, that is a ridiculous statistic. He is so comfortable here at home, as are the Cubs pitchers. If he does all three of those things, it's going to lead to a Cup victory. Talked to Joe Madden before the game. Obviously, he could have gone with the reigning Cy Young Award winner, Jake Arrieta, in game two. Felt more comfortable with Hendricks at Wrigley Field given his tremendous success here this season and Arietta the veteran on the road against Bumgarner in game three. Well, it's a, a lot of choices that weren't were going to be too many wrong answers answers when you've got this kind of pitching staff. 
Here's Baez whirling and from the outfield grass throwing belt out. It was Bryant actually they had the shift on and Bryant who has played all over the field this year. Take a look at the defense but it doesn't always hold. He wasn't anywhere near third base with the shift on he made the play in shallow right. It scored five to three even though it didn't look that way. Well you see Zobris is in left field. He can play a couple positions. Baez in second. The gold Glover, Hayward in right. Fowler, Bryant, Russell and then Anthony Rizzo rounds it out with Contreras behind the plate. One of the best defenses in all of baseball. Something historically. It goes hand in hand with their pitchers to be able to hit their spots. Deliver weak contact. Athletic defense. They don't have to shift much. You saw the shift there. And it worked out with Bryant being in the second base slot. Ball and a strike to Posey. He was putting together a Hall of Fame resume. Rookie of the year. MVP. Batting title. Three World Series rings. At age 29, he caught 122 games this year, the highest total of his career. Bouncing ball, and this is Baez at second base. And the Giants go in order. The Cubs being the sentimental favorites as they are. Here's the Geico starting lineup for them. You don't win 103 games accidentally. They had the best defense in the league, the deepest pitching staff. Only the Red Sox and Rockies scored more runs, and the Red Sox with that terrific lineup of theirs, after all, play at Fenway Park in a DH league, and all offensive numbers are, are distorted somewhat at Coors Field in Colorado. So, in every category, the Cubs are right up there. Well, for Samarja, Bob, this has been an interesting year. They signed him and Cueto, gave depth to that rotation. The numbers are much better the last five to six games for the Giants. Oh, and two to the switch hitting center fielder, Dexter Fowler.
Cubs don't run all that much. But he stole 13 hitting at the top of their order. Down and in one and two. What he does when he gets on base the Cubs roll and that's why his such an important leadoff spot for the Cubs when you have the likes of Bryant and Rizzo and Zobris behind him. Pitch on the outside, fastball, mm. looking to catch the corner. Posey did not move his glove, so that tells me he was set up just a little bit off the edge of the plate. And the 2 2 pitch is fouled back. You know, earlier this year, Fowler had a 12 pitch at bat to lead off the game, in which Samarja threw 45 plus pitches in the first inning. There's a lot of foul balls that Samarja gives up. The key is putting some of those in play. Because of his fastball cutter combination, the hitters fall off a lot of his pitches. Full count with their win last night. The Cubs have taken five out of eight this year against the Giants. Hendricks and Samarja tonight after an off day. Monday in San Francisco, Arietta and Bumgarner. Samarja was seven and two through his first ten starts, and his ERA was two and a half. Since then, five and nine, ERA four and a half. One thing that has always been true of him: he takes the ball. He's among the major league leaders over the last several years in games started, and he'll eat up some innings for you in the postseason against the quality of pitching that the Giants will face in this series against the Cubs. Simply eating up innings might not be enough. See the numbers there, last 10, much better. This is turning into that same type of bat. Eight pitches in. The difference is a starting pitcher wants to go through the lineup if he can, attacking with the fastball early. You, you really don't want to bring in your curveball too early if you don't have to, but in the postseason, you throw that out the window. You create that change of speeds when you need it. Again on three and two. And here's a drive to right. It sends Pence back. And it's off the Ivy. Fowler on his way to second, and he'll stop there with a leadoff double. From 0 2 to 3 2, and everything pretty much firm, he's able to square him up. Into the win, off the Ivy, and lead this game off with a double. Similar to the game earlier here, where he made Samarja work really hard as the leadoff hitter of the game. And now here's Chris Bryant. Despite a weak September, hit just 216 in his last 22 games, he's still probably the favorite to pick up the MVP award. Does that, he'll become the fourth man in Major League history to win the Rookie of the Year and then the MVP the first two seasons. Cal Ripken, Ryan Howard, and Dustin Pedroia have done it previously. Chance of MVP around Wrigley Field. That one came in at 96, and Bryant couldn't catch up with it. Well, and much like some of these Cubs from year to year, they've cut down on their strikeouts as well. That's been a big improvement of why they've been so good and why they have a better chance to go deeper into the postseason this year because they have cut down on their league leading last year's strikeout total. Roll toward third. Here's Gillespie. Across the diamond, he gets Bryant. Well, for Samarja, here's some of the keys that I think for him to pitch in this game and be effective. One of the things he's going to have to do is not let the MVPs beat him. That's Bryant and Rizzo. There's going to come a point in the game where you've got to pitch around them and let the other guys beat you. And then we talked about it in the open. The curveball has to be part of it. He usually brings it back in the second time through the lineup. He may have to go to it earlier and then give me six. Six innings, turn it over to the pen. Those are the keys for Samarja, who does 
compete and throws that fastball at a higher rate this year than he has at any point in his career. So Fowler remains at second now with one out for Rizzo. Samarja checks him and comes home. Rizzo hit 32 home runs this year, the third consecutive season that he's top 30. Coming off of right handed pitching. Panic, as you see, in shallow right, built very deep at first. Crawford in behind the runner, Fowler at second, and foul back to the screen. So now the theme again tonight. Samarja can get to two strikes relatively quick, and then what? Without that splitter, that splitter's been better lately, and without the curveball, they can sit on firm stuff. So he's gotten to two strikes. Early with Fowler, didn't put him away. Now two strikes on Rizzo. See how he and Posey attack the next couple pitches. Sobrist waiting on deck. Struck him out. So Fowler opens with a double. But then their two most dangerous hitters, Bryant. And Rizzo failed to advance him. He's still at second with two down for Zobers. See, this split finger cuts. This is supposed to go away from Rizzo, but it cuts and goes down and in. Actually, fools Rizzo more than what the ball and the spin should have done. Sometimes you get away with that. But that's the tension in this type of game. When you're firm with your fastball, firm with your cutter, firm with your slider, firm with that split, you still got to get the correct action. That one worked out, even though it didn't intend to go in that spot. Here's Zobrist in left field tonight. One of several Swiss Army knife type guys that Joe Madden has at his disposal. He, Baez, even Bryant can be moved all around. Zobrist is in the postseason for the sixth time in his now 11 season career. You know, the new age baseball, Bob, is the reason why Zobrist is batting where he's batting instead of in the perfect spot that would be. If I were facing the Cubs to have him in the number two spot and then Bryant in three and Rizzo in four it lengthens that lineup. But now with the analytics talking about your best hitter getting more at bats over 162 games that's why Bryant is moved up into the number two spot. Samarja checks on Fowler. And Zobras blues one in the shallow right. It's going to land safely. Here comes Fowler with the plate. They have no play on him. One nothing Cubs. David Ross leads the cheering section. Didn't hit it hard, but it had a big impact. Early lead for Chicago. Yeah, there were a few of these hits last time that Samarja was here. Well placed hits, but putting the ball in play has these kind of moments versus big time swings and playing for the home run. The Cubs have done a much better job this year. Addison Russell didn't hit for much of an average, 238, but drove home 95, the highest RBI total for any Cubs shortstop ever, other than Ernie Banks. Zobrist held by Bell. Well, when Madden put, Madden put him in this spot, he relished it, and he started driving in a lot of runs. As you see, second shortstop for the Cubs with 90 plus RBIs. You mentioned about his average being down, but his ability to hit the long ball and drive in runs has proved to be worthy in the number five spot. Rogers 1 1 pitch. A little roller to the right side and panic throws Russell out. But the Cubs strike first. 
and lead it one nothing after one in game two. This Division Series telecast on MLB Network is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And sponsored in part by Michelin, a better way forward. And by Bank of America. The Majors ERA leader among starters, Kyle Hendricks, has been staked to a 1-0 lead after one. As good as he was overall, even better at home, as John Smoltz noted earlier, 9-2 and two at Wrigley. Home ERA 1.32. And Hunter Pence starts it in the second. A broken bat bloop into shallow right field, and it will drop in front of the charging Hayward, who manages to box it in and keep it in front of him. And Pence stops it first with a leadoff hit. The Giants could use a bunch of those and that's what you have to do against Kyle Hendricks you don't seem to barrel up a lot of pitches because of the movement you watch this ball come in you see the bat break and the guy that's at the plate right now is I think the key to the Giants when he goes they go when he doesn't well there's a big difference in the games that they win versus the games that they lose 350 when they win 182. When they don't, this guy has really emerged as one of the best shortstops in the game, offensively and defensively. Well, you have two of the best defensive shortstops in the majors at Wrigley Field tonight Addison Russell of the Cubs and Brandon Crawford of the Giants. You saw some of Crawford's numbers. In addition, he led the National League with 11 triples this year. metrics say they were pretty much even at the top and Angleton Simmons not far behind.
inside two and one. Hendricks went to Dartmouth. And so naturally enough, his nickname in the clubhouse is the Professor. From the Ivy League to the Ivy covered walls of Wrigley Field, and he's excelled in both venues. Rizzo goes to second. And they got it. On to first. No. Rizzo was close enough to the bag that your first thought was, well, he'll just take that one and then maybe take a shot at second base. But he unloaded for the force play right away. Well, to do this, you got to be pretty accurate. And he felt that he could make that throw and not in any way hit the runner as he goes to second base. But he keeps the double play in order. Very aggressive play by Rizzo. As you mentioned, he could have just touched the bag. But he knew what he was going to do as soon as the ball was hit. Of course, if he touches the bag, then it becomes a tag play at second and all the more difficult to execute. So he made the right choice. Here's Pagan. Switch hitter checks in at 277 for the regular season. Led the team in stolen bases with 15. Began his career as a Cub in 06 and 07. Then four years with the Mets, now in his fifth season as a Giant. So far early on, nothing seems to be creating any tension for Kyle Hendricks he's, if he misses he just misses and he still has the touch on that changeup. Fouled away Alan Porter wait a minute. Might have been interference on the play. That's what's been called. Wilson Contreras the catcher. Made contact with Pagan's bat. And he's awarded first base, which pushes Crawford to second. Well, you see the late swing and the glove down, trying to entice that pitch to be in that area. And really, because of the late swing, Pagan was able to hit the glove, and that will go down as a E2, I believe. Yep. Score at E2. Interference play. And a chance for the hero of the wild card game, Connor Gillespie. His three run homer off Jurius Familia won it. Ended the Mets season. Sent the Giants on to Wrigley. Kyle Hendricks was so stingy in these situations throughout the year. That's how you have the best ERA in baseball in the National League. You just don't give up many hits with runners in scoring position, and he didn't do that. Well under 200 on the year. And it doesn't matter if it's a left hander or a right hander his stuff plays on both sides of the plate and you can already see that going softer is a better recipe for him where Samarja tries to go firmer harder when he gets in those situations. Hendricks gets ahead of Gillespie 0 and 2. Through their run of three world championships and a six season stretch, the Giants, of course, have had their mainstays Madison Bumgarner, Buster Posey, the manager, Bruce Bochy, for a while, Pablo Sandoval. But then there have been short term heroes, the guys like Connor Gillespie, Travis Ishikawa, Marco Scudero. They played important roles. It was Gillespie just a few days ago at City Field. Possible double play. There's one. And they turn it. Baez starts it. Russell on the pivot. Rizzo on the receiving end. And they're out of the top of the second.
This division series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico with Hall of Famer John Smoltz and Ken Rosenthal. Bob Costas at Wrigley in Chicago. Cubs lead the series 1 0 and the game 1 0 as they bat in the bottom half of the second. Jason Hayward to start it. Gold Glove quality outfielder, tremendous base runner, head scratchingly poor offensive production. A few years ago, he launched 27 homers as a member of the Atlanta Braves, but he's never been able to recapture that power stroke. No, he's in a mechanical funk, and right now, fastballs are not his friend. He does not catch up to anything with velocity, especially up. A lot of pop ups lately, and just not able to connect. He did here, rifles one down the right field line, fair ball. It ricochets back to Pence. Hayward on his way to second, didn't need to slide, he's in there. Well, there was a glimmer of hope as he hit a bit over 300 in the last 14 games of the regular season. And here is a dart off his bat in his first at bat here in game two. Yeah, it's one of the few times, really, in the last couple months where he's been able to get on top and really look like the bat speed and the hands and everything were in right position. This is the part of the lineup right here for the Cubs that if they get anything out of, it's going to be a long, long scenario for a lot of starting pitchers and relievers, but this is where you go to get out of trouble. Now this young kid, Baez, has made so many adjustments, not to mention the home run he hit last night. Fan favorite number one. Huge ovation for him. Drove one out into the teeth of the wind in the bottom of the eighth last night on Johnny Cueto. All one to Baez, but he's not up there to walk. In 421 at bats, and just a handful of plate appearances beyond that, 15 walks. You got to try to walk him. I was impressed just hearing about his thinking on that approach last night. He knew there would be two pinch hitters behind him for Ross and Lester, and he was finding a way. He just said, I want to find a way to get on base. I was thinking about bunning. And then he got the 3-2, of course, and he connected for that mammoth home run that barely went out. The 2-0. Vicious cut and a miss. Might have popped a button on his jersey on that one. Deep sigh from Buster Posey. And the signs for Samarja. Three and one. Well, I said it was difficult to walk him. Now he's sitting on a 3 1 pitch with Hayward at second and nobody out. Those numbers aren't too shabby, by the way. And again, you're talking about a guy that struck out at a historic rate when he broke in and now really cut down on that. We didn't see that on the 2 0 swing. Huge swing. Well, Samarja managed to walk him. Pitching coach Dave Rigetti wearing a glum expression. <laughs> Terrific starter and reliever at various times during his career with the Yankees. Not quite the Hall of Famer that you were, but on the same route, began as a starter, then became a quality reliever. Well, he's been an unbelievable pitching coach, and the success they've had out of their starters and the relievers. I just don't know how his stomach can take these type of games year in and year out. Here's Wilson Contreras. He's been mentored by David Ross, who at age 39 is playing in his final big league season. And fellow Venezuelan Miguel Montero as well. The 0 1. Into right field. Pence can't get it. 
Runners had to play it safe. The bases will be loaded with nobody out. Yeah, unfortunately, Hayward got a bad read on that from second base where Baez could see it standing at first base right away. His read was much better. Hayward didn't want to take a chance, and he was out all the way back at second base as Baez was coming towards him. Watch this right here. He did not see the same read. He's going back thinking he might get it. And that's just what the different views will do for you when you're on the bases. Not every view is going to be the same. And you can see Jason Hayward explaining what he saw versus what Baez was able to see. Nonetheless, Hendricks up with the bases loaded. So Hendricks with a chance to help himself. He's not much of a hitter. Out at 138 without an extra base hit. And for the Giants, that's the best obvious scenario that could have happened because now you can wiggle out of this with only one run. To think you can get out of this with no runs would be really aggressive thinking on part of Samarja. But you've got the pitcher at, at the plate, and by all accounts, you can get him to hit the ball on the ground or strike him out. The infield as you see is back. Except for Belt who's in close on the grass at first. Gillespie about even with the bag at third. In the middle of the diamond they're back. And Hendricks breaks his bat. But flares it into center and drops for a hit. And two runs score. Baez didn't hesitate. Grab a 3 0 lead. Just before that pitch, they were trying to get the outfielders to move in, and Baez has incredible, incredible baseball instincts. He saw where Span was playing. He did not hesitate at all. The only way you can score, watch this read. He's gone. As Hayward goes to tag up, that's the only thing that slows down Baez. This young man, you can see why they're so high on him. And for Hendricks, wow, what a job at the plate, just putting the ball in play. Didn't hit it, didn't hit it great, but hit it good enough. And already George Contos is warming up in the San Francisco bullpen. A bullet foul from Fowler. Well, and Samarja has yet to throw a curveball. He has stayed with his game plan. It has not worked at this point. He's got to have something to get the hitters off of the firmness of his fastball, slider, cutter, and split. Fowler doubled to right center to begin the first inning for the Cubs. Hoax a bunt foul. There it was. There was the first breaking ball that he's thrown. Two runs home, two men on, still nobody out. Contreras at second, Hendricks at first. Fowler gets under one, lifts it to medium right. Contreras tagging, Pence with the catch. Contreras heads for third, and he'll make it. So runners at the corners with one out for Bryant. Fowler just missed connecting on that one. Pitch over the middle of the plate. Task in front of him. Brian at the plate, Rizzo on deck, and there's strike one. Of course, 
course, the way they play defense against Bryant. There's not really anybody in the second base spot wide open. They play him more up the middle. They'll concede another run if they can't turn two on a ball hit on the ground. Slice to right. Pence in pursuit. It's off his glove. He nearly had it. Another run home. And it's 4 nothing Chicago. The Cubs taking a huge bite out of the shark in the first inning plus. Yeah, there's not a lot of fooled swings right now, and that's what happens when you can keyhole velocity. Pence normally makes this play. Great effort. Come a long way and see it just off the webbing. Contreras scored. Hendricks stopped at second. Rizzo to the plate. A deafening roar at Wrigley Field. So struck out his first time. Strike zone, but I don't know what showed it. The umpire gave the benefit of the doubt. Rizzo skies one to left. Pagan into foul ground in the bullpen area for the catch. Now Samarja, if nothing else, trying to at least get through this inning without further damage and maybe tack on a few more innings before Bochi and Rigetti have to go to their bullpen. Yeah, you wonder, and I think he's one hitter away from being out. I mean, the last thing that Bruce Bochi wants to do is lose that number two spot, which is where he is in the batting order. He could pinch hit if he can get through this inning. I don't think he's going to double switch. There's no reason to double switch this early, but with Samarja due up second in the third inning, if he thinks his chances are better with Contos or a reliever, then he could pinch hit and get a clean possible three innings out of his reliever. That's it. It stays. Well, you're already in a 4 nothing hole. Against a guy who has been very stingy, especially here at Wrigley Field. And you don't have a lineup with a lot of power. And of late, you've struggled, generally speaking, to score runs, even though you have faced quality pitching over the last week or so. They had to beat Kershaw in San Francisco, second to last day. They had to beat Syndergaard. Last night they went down to the wire against Lester. Tonight it's Hendricks. Well, it just to anybody else who's going to face this Cubs lineup, velocity's not going to do it by itself. You've got to be able to change speeds on them. They get locked in on velocity. They're pretty good. Obrist had a little flair for an RBI hit back in the first. Rips it foul. Zobris made the all-star team. 
hit nearly 350 through the first two months of the season. Under 250 since then. With a high on base percentage with almost 100 walks. And so useful because of his versatility. And a switch hitter to boot. Another hard foul. I asked Joe Madden about the little mechanism of his hands when he's getting ready. He's got that little constant motion. He says, well, you wouldn't teach this, but it works for him. As the pitch gets ready, you can see him starting the engines with his hands right there. A pop on the infield. Gillespie calls and puts an end to it, but not before. The Cubs score three more times. Hendricks helping his own cause with an RBI hit that produced two. And after two, they lead it 4 0, looking to take a 2 0 edge in the best of five series. As a proud sponsor of Major League Baseball, Evan Williams has given you a chance to win an all-expensive paid trip to the World Series. Go to evanwilliams.com slash MLB sweeps to learn more. On to the third. And a strike to Joe Panic. He goes the opposite way and it drops in for an extra base hit. Panic is on his way to second. Zobris digs it out of the corner. A leadoff double. Now that's the Joe Panic swing that they've been looking for for a while. He's had some injuries, lower back problem, missed some games. But that's the type of swing he's not having any close to the year that when he broke in and caught everybody by surprise how cool and calm. This swing right here, if they can get more of that. That helps. Yeah, he hitches 239, but he gives them a glimmer of hope opening the third inning here with an extra base hit. And you were right. 
Bochi has seen enough of Samarja. He's going to go to his bench right now. And it's Gregor Blanco, left handed hitter. Yeah, this gives him a chance to be a little bit more creative now in case this inning creates some runs. And who you want to bring in for how long out of the pen because now it's a now it's mix and match the rest of the game for Bruce Bochi and his pen. Well rested. He swings on the first pitch, shoots one toward left center field, and they can't run it down. This is going to produce the first run for the Giants, and Blanco with a pinch hit double. Back to back doubles in the third. And it's four to one. Well, Blanco off the bench said, Look, I'm not going to wait around and let this guy get me to beat it in the ground. I'm going to take the first swing I can. He comes after you with sinkers. And if you don't try to pull this guy, you've got a chance. You see the pitch it's not where of course Hendricks wanted it height wise Blanco took it to the left side of the gap between the two outfielders and that reason that's huge is now you're looking at two runs just without getting the just without getting a hit if you're the Giants if you put it in play move them over move them in now you cut a deficit down to two and hope your bullpen can hold him right there. And all Samarja can hope is that his teammates get him off the hook. An unsightly line for him. Owen one to span who fly the left to start the game. See this in my mind this is what makes the Giants so good it's not too early to think I've got to pull the ball and get him to third now I'd like to pull the ball and get a hit. But getting him to third is a priority. Cutting that deficit down. Well, this is the postseason, and they are the Giants. Battle tested, resourceful, but for whatever it may be worth, during the regular season, with a lead of four runs or more, the Cubs were 71 and 1 with the quality of their starters and the depth of their bullpen. Well, this will get the job done, the job you were talking about. And moves Blanco to third with one out. I just think that's underrated. I think no doubt was Span trying to get a hit, but you got to have a plan and you got to be able to execute it and pass it on to the next guy. The Cubs are going to give up this run on a ground ball, no doubt. So his ability to get him over to third now gives Belt the opportunity to drive him in via a hit or not. Just a ground ball to the right side, and it's all of a sudden four to two. Belt grounded out his first time. Three infielders on the right side. You, know, you mentioned those four runs for the Cubs. And here's that little curveball. I think he can throw that anytime he wants for a strike. Kyle Hendricks, when he got three runs or more, 16 and one on the year. His seven losses came in games where his team only scored two runs or less. So you can understand. Losing those games. He was not the benefactor as much as the other guys were with a ton of run support. He had to pitch early on in the games where the Cubs didn't score a lot of runs. Blanco leading away from third as the count goes to two and one on Belt. We talked with Bruce Bochi about some of the decisions you have to make in compiling your roster for each round of the postseason. And Blanco was one of those guys that might have been on the bubble, but he kept him on the roster because of the various things he can do. He's a good glove man. He can pinch it with him. He has a little bit of sock from the left side, and he can also run, so you can use him as a pinch runner. In this case, he came off the bench and delivered an RBI double. In a spot where he could use a strikeout, Hendricks has belt at two and two. Belt has to find a way to put it in play. Full count. That one came in at 91, which is about the peak yeah. of Hendricks' velocity. That's his four seamer that he can ride up and throw up and change the ice eye level. This should get a run home. It certainly will. Fowler all the way to the track to take it. So Blanco trots home. 
and the Giants have cut the deficit in half. And again, you love to get hits, but that's the next best thing right there. From a time where you gave up four runs in the previous two innings, you now feel like you're right back in the game. Now it's up to the bullpen to keep it close so you can keep nibbling. A strike to Buster Posey, who's 0 for 1. See those 14 homers for the year. He went from mid July to mid September without clearing the wall. 49 homerless games. And I'm not so sure a thumb injury didn't contribute to that lack of power. He played through it. Of course, the average still decent, but you mentioned the power outage out in the second half. Of course, all the games that he catches, and just the, the, the necessity down the stretch that the Giants had to win. Here's Bryant to his left, comes up with it, double clutches, but has time. And that's that in the third, but not before the Giants get off the mat a bit. Down for nothing. They've made it 4 2. The Hartford pitching change brings him out of the giant bullpen long before he ever wore a big league uniform. He made his share of visits to Wrigley Field. Grew up in Skokie, Illinois, attended Northwestern, and was a Cub fan as a kid. Comes in here with the Cubs leading his Giants 4 to 2. Bottom of the third, Addison Russell, Jason Hayward, Javier Baez. In the first 17 innings of this postseason, Baumgartner and Cueto allowed one run. First two innings of this game, Samarja yielded four and he's out. Here's Crawford. One shortstop throws out the other. Ken Rosenthal is with us tonight. This could be an historic season for the Cubs, and just in case, Joe Madden has his own way of keeping track. 
He does, Bob, and he has worked a long time with a sports psychologist named Ken Revisa. And in the past two springs, Revisa has done an unusual motivational tactic for the Cubs. On a spring training field, he laid out 162 balls, broken down by month, and then added one for the wild card game, five and seven and seven for each potential playoff series wanted the players to visualize what was ahead of them. Now this season, at the end of the year, actually last Tuesday, they lined up all the balls from the season. They had had them authenticated, score, pitcher of record by the Cubs, lined them all up in the Cubs clubhouse on a circular counter, and had the players see exactly what they had accomplished. There were 103 winning baseballs there, and they still had the blanks, the five for the division series, the seven for the LCS, and the seven for the World Series that lie ahead. I wonder if in every case with the victories so far they've been the last ball used in the game that's out of play and if so somebody had to climb into the basket to get that ball which no fan was able to reach and Javier Baez hit out barely to win it last night. Bob, I don't know exactly which ball they used but that ball was returned to Baez last night so I don't know that that's going to be the one that's marked up he might want to keep it. The high point of his career to this point, why not? Well, the Cubs were, by every objective measure, not just the sentimental favorites, but the best team in baseball this year. And it's not a lightning in a bottle kind of thing. This is a team that's likely to be a contender for several seasons. Hayward wallops one toward right center field, but it's going to be run down by Denard Spann. Didn't hit it nearly as hard as I first thought. The math, on the other hand, is daunting. Since the beginning of the wild card era in the mid 90s, 22 teams have won 100 games or more. Only six of those 22 have made it as far as the World Series, and only two of them. The 1998 Yankees and the 2009 Yankees won the World Series. It's just such a gauntlet to run through the Division Series, the LCS, and then the World Series. Yeah, it is, and there's also not as big of an advantage as there should be for those kind of teams because you don't have to utilize your whole team with the days off in the postseason. Sometimes two pitchers can beat you in a series. You don't need to use your whole staff. So it's just interesting how Madden chose this week as every manager when they have rest, how do they take care of that time? They did a simulation simulate simulated game and they basically took care of some instruction league type go over their plays. You can't really do anything else. But what's given you and the opportunity that they had was they could rest and then play a meaningful game really mm -hmm. for the last. 20 or so games because they clinched it. But taking the edge off yesterday with Lester's performance and that victory will go a long way to resume activity as normal because Joe Madden said, We're playing 163, guys. We're not changing anything. And that was yesterday. Now this is game 164. Baez had a rare walk his first time up, strikes out on three pitches this time. And Cantos has restored some order, at least for the moment. He sets the Cubs down in order in the third.
Our division series telecast from Wrigley on MLB Network is presented by Geico with Ken Rosenthal and John Smoltz. Bob Costas in Chicago where the Cubs lead it as we move to the fourth. Four to two. It'll be Hunter Pence followed by Brandon Crawford and then Angel Pagan. Pence had a single his first time up. When you look at Hunter Pence, any number of adjectives come to mind. Fluid is not among them. Everything about him seems to be herky jerky. Unorthodox. But very good in his unorthodox way. Yeah, here's an adjective that does apply. Winner. Yeah. Since 2012, in games where he's been in the lineup, the Giants are well over 500. When they've been without him, as they were for a considerable stretch this year when he had a hamstring injury, significantly beneath 500. A little pop, back of the plate, Contreras will take it. Between innings, Ken Rosenthal talked with Joe Madden. Here they are. Joe, did you see anything different with Kyle that last inning? Ball was up a little bit. I thought the pitch to Blanco was up. I thought uh, Panic was a good hitting. Just hit the ball down the left field line, and then uh, Belt with the sacrifice fly, another good piece of hitting. So I think the one pitch to Blanco would be the pitch you want back. All right, multiple choice question on your big inning. What did you like best, Baez walk, Hendricks hit, or Baez's base running? Wow, that's a tough question. I, I like the opposite field approach too. Uh, I like KB's line drive to the right side. I like Contreras's line drive to the right side. I like a lot of that, but you're right. Uh, I keep talking about Javi and his baseball acumen and how well he runs the bases. He was trying to push Jason on the first ball that was hit down the right field side, then eventually he pushed him on Kyle's hit. He sees things in advance of the moment. Joe, thank you. Pleasure, Thanks, Ken and Joe, and the Cubs manager backing up your viewpoint about the baseball acumen of young Javier Baez. Yeah, it really is unbelievable. I mean, you know, he came on the scene, everyone was talking about his raw power. I don't know that anybody realized what okay. an incredible all around player he could become and has for the Cubs. Joe Madden can utilize more pieces on his board than most teams. They can put players in different spots, he utilizes different weapons, and that's why they had a great year. And I think the interesting thing is, he said, I'm going to put my guys in a situation so when the postseason comes, there's no surprises. Mm -hmm. I mean, Zobr Zobris in left field. Brian at first, Brian in right field, Brian at second. Any of those situations, he was preparing the whole season for this journey, and it's uh, it's worked out for him. The 2-2 to Crawford is punched to the left side. Bryant in front of Russell to make the play. And on the flip side, what I've become to really appreciate since my days of playing were over is what the Giants have inside their clubhouse that you can't measure. It's the Pence that you talked about, his leadership inside. It's the quiet but fierce Bruce Bochy in this personality of a team that never seems to get carried away with the moment. After last night's one nothing victory, some sediments were, we got them where we want them, boys. They just have this feeling they're going to win. Pagan bunts and Contreras waits for it to trickle foul before picking it up. And to that point, they haven't lost an elimination game, it seems like forever. Well, they won the first two world championships in this three titles and a six season run as division winners in the West. But then they won in 2014 as a wild card. Should they lose this game? Bochi might remind them of 2012 when they were down to Dusty Baker and the Cincinnati Reds 2-0 and then won the last three games and went on to win the World Series. So they've done it this way and that. They got that guy right there. Blooming in game three. Owen one to Pagan. Who reached on catcher's interference in the second. In case you're wondering, that scored as an error for the catcher Contreras, but it is not an official at bat for Pagan. When I was a kid, the announcers would always say, if you're scoring at home, is there anyone who's still scoring at home? If they are, it's on an iPad. <laughs> Take some of the romance out of it. 
Two out, nobody on with the one two pitch. Line right back at Hendricks, who recovers to field it. The throw is offline. Rizzo can't hold it. And Pagan is safe, and now they'll have to check on Hendricks. Yeah, that got him pretty good, and Pagan got down the line really quickly. As you could tell, you could hear the sound live, and we're pretty far up. Wondering if it got him at the forearm of his pitching arm at all at any point. We're hoping it got more the stomach area than uh, than the arm. As good as his mechanics are, he finishes up pretty good and to put himself in a defensive situation. That ball was hit pretty firmly. They put the ball back in his glove. And Madden's going to wait for him to take a few tosses just to be sure he's okay to continue. It looked like the middle of his torso took it more so than the forearm. Yeah, just a on glancing, the pitching side, yeah, glancing blow off the arm a little bit. And so, again, when you're in this situation, of course, Joe Madden's going to say, "We don't need any heroes if you can't perform at the level that it takes for that movement and sinker and command." That's what the discussion they're having right now. Scored as a base hit. That would be obvious. One more look. I don't think he's going to continue. Yeah. Well, he's coming out of the game. A little fist bump from Wilson Contreras. Deprived of the chance for a victory. Leaves leading four to two, but without having pitched the requisite five innings to qualify for the victory. That's a far less concern than his availability for the rest of the postseason. Travis Wood is going to come out of the bullpen. Versatile reliever, sometimes used to get a single left handed hitter out, but he can give you length. And that's what Joe Madden wants here, and obviously, he'll have as much time as he needs to get ready because he's coming in. At as a result of the injury to Hendricks. Back to Wrigley after this. these two truck beds. Let's start over here with this aluminum bed. Put your toolbox up here. Whoa. That's a big hole. That is unbelievable. Now let's check out the roll-formed steel bed of the Silverado. Same spot, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. It's truck month. Find your tag and get over 11,000 total value on this Silverado All-Star. Or now through October 10th, get 0% financing for 72 months on all 2016 Silverado pickups. We're going to prove just how wet and sticky your current gel antiperspirant is. Now, we're going to show you how Degree Dry Spray is different. Degree Dry Spray. Degree. It won't let you down. When Wendy's remodeled their grilled chicken sandwich, marinating the chicken led to overhauling the bun with seven grains, and so on and so on. Because Wendy's wouldn't stop improving until the new grilled chicken sandwich was deliciously different. And for a limited time, get the combo for just $5. Plenty of closers have fastballs touching triple digits. But what set Mariano Rivera apart was his ability to deliver. 
when it mattered most. At the Hartford, we share that same commitment to our customers, helping over one million small business owners prevail when the pressure's on. Our latest Hartford pitching change brings Travis Wood on. He is the longest tenured Cubs player completing his fifth season in Chicago so it shows you what kind of overhaul has taken place here. Theo Epstein guiding them from a team that lost more than 100 games four years ago to a team that won 103 this year and is the favorite to make it to the World Series. Well Statcast is going to show us what Mr. Hendricks was feeling. Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services talks about the exit velocity right here, almost 94 miles an hour. So that reaction time, even though 60 feet away, this ball got on him in a hurry. Kyle Hendricks is known for lower exit velocity throughout the year, but that one cost him an opportunity to pitch in this game. So Contreras drapes an arm over the shoulder of Travis Wood. Young catcher, veteran pitcher, who inherits a 4 2 lead and a man at first base with two out on the top of the fourth. And will face Connor Gillespie. Well, they're not missing much when Wood comes in as far as another athlete because he can handle the bat. And with all the left handers that the Giants have in the lineup, you look for Wood and Montgomery to play a big role after the right handers. It was Gillespie of course with the winning homer on Wednesday night at City Field after Noah Syndergaard had battled Madison Bumgarner on equal terms for so long deep into that game and afterwards here's what Syndergaard said baseball has a way of ripping your heart out stabbing it putting it back in your chest and then healing itself just in time for spring training. He must have been channeling the late baseball commissioner and man of letters A. Bartlett Giamatti who once said pretty much the same thing although Giamatti may have said it a bit more elegantly. Syndergaard had the idea. Well, he pitched unbelievable in that game and that three run homer. The reason Gillespie was able to even hit that three run homer is because the guy on deck. Panic was able to foul off an incredible pitch and work a walk, which made it first and second. And now they got a pitch to Gillespie. If he doesn't work the walk, they're going to walk Gillespie, make Bruce Bochy make a decision about Bumgarner, more than likely pinch hit, and the scenario could have played out much different. Two and two. Speaking of Bumgarner as a hitter, during batting practice tonight, he hit one. Off the scoreboard at the back of the bleachers in left center. Well, he put on a little show. I was watching that show. And he watched a lot of them as after he hit them. Well, he'll get his chance to swing the bat again on Monday at AT&T. Full count. And Pagan, one of their speediest base runners, will be off of the pitch. Ball touching 94 out of wood here with the adrenaline in the postseason. Rizzo behind Pagan who takes off and a called strike three. Alan Porter punches Gillespie out. And the Cubs are out of the top of the fourth, but they lost their starter in the process.
lets MLB fans, even a little guy like that, dig into the game with unlimited LTE data. Show us how you're baseball's number one fan by using hashtag unlimited baseball for a free MLB shop gift code and the chance to win tickets to every 2017 World Series game. With an update on Kyle Hendricks, here's Ken Rosenthal. Bob, the ball caught him in the forearm, and as he was trying to warm up and throw some pitches there, it started tightening up on him. So the Cubs didn't want to take a chance. That's why they removed him from the game. And replaced him with Travis Wood, who is now on deck. George Contos worked a perfect third in relief of Samarja. Contreras had a single his first time up. Part of a three run Cubs second. And the 1 1 pitch to him. Check swing foul. Contreras hit the first pitch he saw in the major leagues for a pinch hit homer. Over the Ivy and straight away center field here at Wrigley. That was back in June. He has a brother who's a catcher in the Braves minor league system from Venezuela. Browns at the third. Gillespie throws him out. Between innings, Ken Rosenthal was over in the other dugout to talk with Bruce Bochy. Bruce. With Hendricks coming out of the game for a left hander, how does that affect the way you use your bench going forward? Well, I mean, we're a little tight here with the bench, but uh, you know, we got right handers ready to go. And, you know, when they uh, made the change there, I, I got a whole ground here. You probably see Bumgarner hit next inning. <laughs> All right, now your bullpen. We're not going to see Bumgarner there, but what might you do the rest of the way? You've got a rest of group. Yeah, we do, and uh, we'll match it up. Uh, we have plenty of innings down there, uh, so we're we're fine. Uh, we have some guys that actually uh, need some work. Uh, Try to get this inning out of George and then we'll piece it together. Bruce, thanks. You got it. Well, that is the risk you run on live television when you run something on tape. He mentioned Madison Bumgarner. Well, Travis Wood just hit the 10th home run of his career. He is third among active pitchers. Bumgarner is first with 14. Giovanni Gallardo has a dozen, and that's 10 for Travis Wood, and that's 5 2 for the Cubs. I said you weren't missing much when Wood comes in at the plate and an athlete and he delivered as a reliever. I think the hardest thing to do as a reliever in a postseason is check in. He not only checked in on the mound, he checked in at the plate and getting a standing up. See if he missed first base. They were hoping he was so excited that he would just walk over the bag looking at the ball that he hit. Well, he's hit a few before, yeah. so doubtful that he'd miss the bag. Well, he got every bit of this, and he knew it. And he touched first. Dexter Fowler now with a high fly ball to White. Pence a couple of steps back to put it away. Five two Cubs looking to take a two nothing lead in a best of five series. Back to the point that you were making. No matter how any of these division series turn out. It isn't logical to have the first round be best of five and then the LCS and World Series be best of seven when the first round is the only one guaranteed to include the wild card survivor and the third best division winner. And a best of five obviously is subject to a more fluky result than a best of seven, especially when you throw in potentially two off days out of five. Bumgarner has got a bat. Ochi mentioned that possibility. Get a chance perhaps to see if he can match what Wood just did. So that might be something that baseball 
will take a look at in upcoming years. Both the owners and the players have reason to consider shortening the regular season. Even if you cut it back to just say 158, you provide a little breathing room. The schedule is too jam packed. Players are tired. Too many back to back games, cross country trips on getaway days. Swing and a miss by Bryant. If you did that, and then you made the first round best out of seven, potentially you'd add eight more playoff games when you combine the two leagues for network television and that's shared revenue. But more important, it would make that first round more legitimate. And my thought would be that when the team with the best record plays the wild card team instead of 2 3 2 go 2 2 3 and further advantage the team that was best over the course of the long season. Well there's no doubt that when you see the numbers only two teams have won the championship with the best record out of 22 that 100 win season. That's an alarming number. You could understand if it was half or 40 percent but only two definitely makes that point. That some things are not the same as 162 game schedule. And the postseason could be more. For the coin. Bryant with a line drive that is caught at short by Brandon Crawford. Well, the highlight of the inning was Travis Wood going deep. And a happy Cub fan triumphantly lifting the ball skyward. 5 2 Cubbies. This Division Series telecast on MLB Network is brought to you by Bud Light. Raise one to right now. And sponsored in part by Charles Schwab. Own your tomorrow. And by Wendy's. Well, look who's in the on deck circle. Madison Bumgarner will be next as Travis Wood works on Joe Panic, who had a double his first time. I don't know about. Mr. Wood and I've never done it in the postseason but I was not very good when I was fortunate enough to hit a home run in a regular season game my next inning pitching was not what I wanted it to be. 
I did, it did it change your focus? Oh my gosh, I was so excited. It's like getting a hole in one in golf. Like you don't expect to ever hit a home run, at least I didn't. And so you got to get back to pitching. And you got to get back to just honing yourself in. Can't imagine hitting a home run in a postseason game. Turns out Wood is the third Cub pitcher to do it. Rick Sutcliffe did it here at Wrigley in 1984, and Kerry Wood in Game Seven in 2003 against the Marlins. Those, however, were part of the two most heartbreaking Cub postseason defeats in what amounts to close to recent memory. They had the two-nothing lead on the Padres in what was then a best-of-five LCS, and it slipped away. And they had the three one lead on Florida and it all slipped away in catastrophic fashion game six and seven here at Wrigley. After falling behind on the count Wood comes back to get panic looking. Now just to make the further point about Wood Madden has used him in left field in the platoon situation in a couple extra inning games and he's going to take that to spring training identify two relievers that he will utilize in a game. Where he loves the strategy of bringing in a right hander and a left hander without having to make that many changes. So Bumgarner, 186, but with three homers and as you see, nine RBIs. You know what both he and Wood are thinking. I'm telling you. Bumgarner and BP. Normally you take BP, you hit a ball, and you get another one thrown about five, ten seconds later. He hit it hard. It's off Bryant's chest. Does he have time to recover? He throws it away. It went into the dugout, so Bumgarner takes second. Ball was absolutely square, squared up. I think he might have even grunt it. That ball takes a bat hop on Bryant. He gets it, and as he throws it, it sails. See how ball just sails into the runner. Good throw. Would have got Bumgarner. Technically, two errors on the play: an error on the ball off the bat, and then a second error when Bryant threw it away to allow Bumgarner to advance to second. Breaking ball. That's one of the toughest pitches, I think, for an umpire to call. Goes through the zone. You call it where it goes through the zone or where he, the catcher catches it. Ground ball to second. Baez on one knee throws him out. Bumgarner over to third. So the point I was going to make just to finish it up, he would hit a home run, wait, watch it, and BP. Then he would get another throw, and he did this about seven different times because I counted seven home runs, including the one you said that he hit the scoreboard here. When you're not pitching, there's nothing more fun than taking BP as a pitcher. Here's Belt, grounded out, had a long sacrifice fly. Baez way back on the outfield grass in shallow right. From the first base side of the rubber. Bell with a fly ball to right. Hayward going back to the edge of the track to put an end to the giant fifth. Bumgarner is stranded at third, and it's 5 2 Chicago.
games tomorrow begins with the Dodgers and Nats who will rain out today. They'll play game two at one o'clock Eastern time FS1 then Indians and Red Sox at Fenway on TBS at four Eastern and the Rangers and the Blue Jays at 730 Eastern time also on TBS. This is rookie left hander Ty Block out of the bullpen for the Giants as the Cubs come up in the bottom half of the fifth with Rizzo Zobrist and Russell to face him. Block's last outing was a week ago second to last game of the regular season and all he did was throw eight scoreless innings against the Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw the Giants won the game three to nothing and they needed it. They barely got by the Cardinals to grab the second wild card spot. And then of course they had Bumgarner ready. They were able to win that game at City Field and get themselves here to Chicago. Rizzo rolls it weakly to the left side and he becomes the first out on the fifth. I can imagine just giving him the news. Hey kid we need you to start. All right. You're going against Kershaw. Well to your point he pitched brilliantly and made the San Francisco Giants those last four games so important as they battled with the Cardinals. I think sometimes it can go either way on the West Coast when the East Coast team is trying to chase you down. You get to see what they do more than not likely before you get to play. Which is why it's such a good idea and Tony Petiti who used to run right. the Major League Baseball Network and now is a lieutenant for Commissioner Rob Manfred. It was his idea to start all the games on the last day of the season at the same time Correct. three o'clock Eastern time so that you wouldn't have a situation where a team had no incentive if they already learned that a team they were hoping would lose had won and they'd been eliminated all the games playing out simultaneously. Let's check in with Ken guys on block Madison Baumgartner in between hitting home runs during batting practice told me a funny story about him. He said that every time Block comes into a game and prepares to start, he looks like he's scared to death. But Bumgarner just smiled and said, he doesn't pitch like it. And you know what? He doesn't hit like it either because in addition to out pitching Clayton Kershaw a week ago, he got two hits off Kershaw in that game as well. So taking after Bumgarner, effective left-handed pitcher who can also swing the bat. has an RBI single and he's popped out Had a big October as a member of the Royals got himself a World Series ring was in the postseason four times playing with Joe Madden in Tampa Bay made the World Series once in 2008 lost it to the Phillies now playing in October as a Cub and taking a seat called out on strikes. This is just a perfect pitch. You see, maybe catches the corner right there. You keep putting pressure. You keep hitting your spots. Not only put pressure on the hitter to decide whether it's a strike or not, but the umpire. Addison Russell, a pair of ground outs. You know, just about everybody knows the Cubs have not won the World Series since 1908. And many people know they haven't been in the World Series since 1945. That is a fair ball and a heck of a play by Gillespie and a long throw to get him. Wow, what a play. And the little history lesson must be held for a little while. Take a look at this into foul territory. And just in time to get Russell. Sparkling play by Gillespie and more on Cup history when we come back.
Bill Murray here again as he was last night whooping it up between innings with his team in front five to two and perhaps on the verge of taking a two nothing lead in the series such a Cub fan that he named one of his sons Homer Banks Murray. New pitcher for the Cubs. It's Carl Edwards. Lean 25 year old right hander 6 3 and 170. Facing Buster Posey as the Giants bat in the sixth. Yeah, if you're at home thinking you can develop or know how to throw a baseball 98 miles an hour, size is not always the issue. This is uh, genetics right here. Wiry 98 mile an hour fastball with a good curveball and slider. Posey managing only a weak wave at that, one and two. Edwards has really added to the depth of what became and now is one of the best bullpens in baseball with the Cubs, adding Chapman. You got Edwards, you got Strope, you got Rondon, and then Chapman to put the finishing touches on it as he did last night. You saw that curveball right there for Posey, who's about the quietest hitter on the Giants, trying to get ready for 96, 97 miles an hour, almost fooled into swinging at that breaking. Larry Vanover at first said he didn't go. And the 2 2. Rolled toward Russell, who scoops it up and throws Posey out. You can experience every postseason moment with MLB.com at bat. At bat, the number one app for live baseball. It's the only place to get it all live radio feeds, video highlights, pitch tracking, stat cast, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Official caps, t shirts, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate your favorite team with the latest postseason gear at MLBShop.com. Hunter Pence is one for two. So prior to the last commercial break, I was making the point that many fans know that the last time the Cubs were in the World Series was 1945. They lost in seven. To Hank Greenberg, Prince Hal Newhauser, and the Detroit Tigers. What many may not know was that between their last World Championship in 1908 and their last appearance in the World Series in 1945, they were in the series seven times and lost all seven of them. Once to Babe Ruth and the Red Sox in 1918. to the mound Edwards knocks it down underhand flip two out that ended a long run of early 20th century success for the Red Sox and began their own curse which wasn't finally broken into 2004 they also lost a couple of times to the then Philadelphia A's Connie Max team. They lost a couple of World Series to the Tigers in 35 and 45 and they twice lost to Babe Ruth and the Yankees actually second time Ruth was no longer with the Yankees 1938 but in 1932 they were swept in the World Series and that was the series that included the famous Babe Ruth called shot here at Wrigley Field. Well what's so impressive to me about the Cubs this year is the hype they had before the season they've lived up to it. What Theo Epstein has been able to do and build this organization around young everyday players instead of going with the dynamic power arms he's got veteran arms in his rotation. Look out. So what the Cubs addressed it they addressed every need they had this year and they have really accomplished every goal. Can you imagine Theo Epstein doing what he did at the Red Sox and then what you just laid out and be able to come here and do it with the Cubs. I don't think it gets any better than that. Crawford with a two out hit. His first base knock of the night. By the way, x rays were taken on Kyle Hendricks. They have come back negative. Good news for the Cubs.
Pagan the hitter. Contreras to the mound. Chris Baggio, the pitching coach, coming out of the dugout to join the conference. Just, just to piggyback on the Theo Epstein situation, you know a lot of his draft choices are still with the Red Sox. A lot of guys in the All-Star game were his draft choice. He has not missed. If you think about it, going all the way back to some of the guys that he's drafted with this organization, they've come up, they've delivered, they can play multiple positions. It's a credit to their whole system for being able to identify, go, get, sign, and produce. And they all are doing it in a credible way. Well, the guy on the mound for the Cubs right now, Carl Edwards Jr., is one of many Epstein acquisitions. And with more on Edwards, here's Ken. Bob, he's a former 48th round pick by the Texas Rangers out of Prosperity, South Carolina. On workout day, he was so excited. He got up at 8.30 a.m., even though the Cubs weren't working out until much later in the day. His parents are staying with him. His dad was not awake when Carl got up. But Carl said that this is like when he was in Little League, being in the playoffs for the first time. Back when he was in Little League, he'd wake up at 6 a.m., get dressed for a 9 o'clock game. He's 25 now, but it's his first appearance in the postseason, as I said, and he's just as excited. That innocence, that exuberance puts a smile on your face just hearing about it. Pagan reached on catcher's interference and then singled. Technically one for one. Edwards 1 0 pitch. A chance for Russell. The flip to Baez, and that's that. The Cubs come up in the sixth. They took the lead early, and they still hold it 5 to 2.
full slate of division series games on Monday two of them on TBS Jim Cotton I will be at Dodger Stadium for game three of the Nats and the Dodgers. And it concludes with game three of this series from AT&T Park Arietta against Bumgarner on FS1. Cubs come up in the sixth. Ty Block still on the mound for the Giants. Hard ground ball foul off the bat of Hayward. You look at the teams in the postseason. The Red Sox and the Giants have each won three World Series in the early portion of this century. But the Cubs haven't won since early in the last century. And the Indians haven't won since 1948. And the Dodgers haven't won since 1988. And the Blue Jays haven't won since 1993. The Nationals have never won in franchise history if you count the Expos which is the genesis of that franchise that goes back to 1969 and Texas which traces its history back to the Washington Senators of 1961 the Rangers though they've been to the World Series they have never won. So the Nats and the Rangers are franchises that have never won and it's been a while for the Blue Jays the Dodgers and the Indians. Hayward down on strikes to start the Chicago sixth and Bochi out to make a pitching change. Block did a good job while he was in there. Santiago Casilla who once was their closer and lost that particular job coming on. First, they're shaving blades. Entree, fries, and a drink, plus a world famous DQ Sunday. So buy a DQ five buck lunch and have lunch's best deal all day long. Let five buck freedom ring. Santiago Casilla, in his 13th season in the majors at age 36 from the Dominican Republic, faces Javier Baez, who has walked and struck out and gets into this one, drives it to deep left. It's in play off the wall, sprinting for second and diving headlong to make it. Baez with a double. Well, he paid for it there at the end. Yeah, he sure did. Coming out of the box, he thought this was a home run and had such top spin on it that he had closing speed to get to second, but sliding into first, he paid the price. Baez is a wonderful young player. So this is a general thought. But so many players think a ball is out. What's the harm in running hard until the umpire gives the signal? 
then you don't find yourself in a situation where either A, you're out when you shouldn't be, or B, you're nearly out and you have to risk injury by diving like this. Uh, he thought he crushed it right there. He put his head down similar to yesterday. And then, of course, last minute and the head first slide. Panic trying to apply the tag, and he did. Yeah, I think it's the tag that got him, right? Right it's into the, the leg and the uh, head. That, right, into the leg. And then the tag on top of it. Boom, boom. Now, a lot of people don't like the head first slide unless it's avoiding a tag in a scenario, but there. We'll feel that tomorrow. Astute baseball people, yourself included, his manager Joe Madden, rightly praise his baseball instincts, his feel for the game. In this particular case, it's a mistake that so many players make. Why not just run until you're sure? And they're going to take a look at this to see whether or not the ball might have cleared the wall, I guess. In the postseason, you're allowed two challenges. This would be the first that either club has used. I, I think I think they're going to look here, Bob, at the slide to see if the tag, if any point of his body if he came, came off, off the bag, because he comes up just for a fraction. You see him slide into the bag, and then when he comes up, look what his hand comes off the bag, and there's a separation between his body and the bag. Yeah, that could be it. They teach you now with this replay it wasn't intended for these kind of scenarios right when you slide in and come up a fraction off the bag but now every infielder is taught keep the tag on him throughout the entire slide obviously safe right there and then when he comes up that's going to be the difference and you and I have talked about this several times he's out he's out because he came off the bag for a millisecond. Technically it's the right ruling because the rule is in place. But this has nothing to do with why replay was instituted. It had nothing to do with correcting a play like that. There's really nothing to correct. Yeah, and in this case, this was just a combination of again getting there late, sliding in head first, popping into panic, and then panic doing the right thing by holding the tag. That'll turn into a single now. Yep. Single, then he's out 7 4. And smarting in more ways than one. Contreras at the plate, 2 0. Oh. He's very concerned about his parents who are still in Venezuela. I started to mention this earlier. He's moved them to the safest possible area, an area where they have round the clock security guards. And they actually have their groceries delivered to the door so they don't have to go out. Those who are close to people who have some wealth, like ball players, are subject to kidnappings in Venezuela. It's a significant problem. The country itself is in turmoil. And so he's very concerned about his parents and hopeful of moving them to the United States as soon as feasible. See a blue nine saves this year, tied for most in the majors. So Sergio Romo is now their closer once again by default because Casilla simply couldn't do the job. And unfortunately for the Giants, this was a big part of their second half swoon. They didn't score a ton of runs, but they weren't holding games. They blew a lot of saves. Line drive, Crawford can't get it. So here's a scenario last night that rewarded Baez for a home run. He absolutely crushes this ball. Watch the similarities. He knows it's gone, takes his time. Unfortunately, it only cleared it by an inch, or fortunately it did. In this scenario, same scenario where he thinks it's gone. Tonight was a different story, though. The ball did not 
leave the ballpark. You see right there, Pagan says if that screen's not there, I'm catching this ball. But Baez, two straight nights, one a homer, one just short, and then the out at second base. Miguel Montero now to pinch hit for Carl Edwards. Joe Madden has three catchers on his roster. Contreras starting tonight. Montero pinch hitting here. And David Ross playing his last handful of games, games he hopes will take him all the way to the World Series, is the third catcher. He caught Lester last night, as he almost always does. You know there are all time greats who when they retire there's kind of a tour and they're celebrated not just at home but on the road. It's happening to David Ortiz this year it happened to Jeter and others like him and then there are just solid baseball citizens like David Ross and they get a tip of the cap perhaps in a in a less ostentatious way but it happens and here's what happened in the late season game against the Cardinals Lester was pitching. And Madden went to the mound and Ross joined the conference and said what are you doing here Lester's doing fine he's only throwing about 85 pitches he said I've come to take you out of the game so you can get the ovation you deserve and that's what happened here at Wrigley Field he took the catcher out of the game in the middle of the inning so the fans could salute him. It's been an incredible year for him and certainly the emotions of the celebration here in his final home game that he wasn't expecting but he is so intense when he's catching his pal and teammate John Lester. He's also had influence on the young catcher Montre uh, on Contreras and he has said what a unbelievable weapon his arm is and the tools that he has behind the plate. At first, with two out. And the 2 2 pitch. A sky high pop. Belt and foul ground. Has it. Well, this was an inning that contained a couple of things that kind of get under your skin. Love Javier Baez, but you got to run. Instant replay makes sense, but not for calls like that. In any case, inning over.
That Toddlin' Town is really Toddlin' these days over their Cubs, and StatCast is powered by Amazon Web Services. See more of MLB's revolutionary tracking technology at MLB.com slash StatCast. Mike Montgomery is the pitcher, and Kelby Tomlinson is pinch hitting. Montgomery has been a great find coming over from Seattle. Good breaking ball, good over the top fastball. He's provided some quality innings, spot start here or there, but going to be utilized out of the bullpen as one of the top left handers that Madden can go to. So Connor Gillespie, the hero of the wild card game, with his home run off Familia, is pin pinch hit for in this situation with the left hander on the mound. Gillespie, a left handed batter. Tomlinson can stay in the game and play third base as he leads off here in the seventh. Significant splits between lefties and righties for Tomlinson. You know, when you see these two teams, there's a good sinker away for a ball. You see these two teams in the eight position players out on the field, you can make an argument it's 4 4 when you're trying to see who's got the advantage at each position. But then after that, when it comes to the bench, Chicago, bullpen, Chicago. That takes care of Tomlinson. Overall starting staff would be Chicago. And so the eight position players, they they match each other really well. And the Cubs just find ways to do things that not to mention their 103 wins. They just can beat you in a, in a bunch of ways. So when they went out and got Chapman, a lot of people felt that was the final chapter to a team that could go all the way and have the depth to win. The World Series. Araldis Chapman threw 21 pitches in finishing up the game last night after eight brilliant scoreless innings from John Lester. But Madden told us before the game that Chapman is available tonight should he need it. And, and I always say uh, the, the mark of a championship team is, is you've got to have a defining edge that somebody's afraid of. You've got to have something that makes them affect their strategy and how they play the game. A chopper towards second. Baez charges, flips, and retires panic. Besides all the obvious ones we just talked about, that decided advantage now goes to the bullpen for the Cubs. And you pretty much better have the lead going in late, or you're not going to come away with a come from behind victory. So now Bochi to his bench again. And here's Eduardo Nunez. Nunez missed the last week or so of the regular season with a hamstring injury. And other than pinch hitting duty, Bochi told us he probably would not start a game unless and until this series goes to a game five, in which case it's a likely reprise of the Leicester versus Cueto matchup, and he would start Nunez, assuming he's ready, against the left hand. Definitely wanted to see Nunez run a little bit better in Ableton to put him in the lineup as a starter. That pinch hit appearance off of Chapman, the ball that he hit to second base, normally he's going to beat that out. And he did not beat that out and was tentative running to first base. It's this one hard to left, but it's right at Zobrist. The Giants go in order in the seventh. They stretch at Wrigley. And when we come back, Chris Bryant will be the second hitter in the bottom half of the inning.
Tonight's Division Series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico with John Smoltz and Ken Rosenthal. Bob Costas at Wrigley Field to the bottom half of the seventh. Top of the order for the Cubs. And Derek Law comes out of the bullpen for the Giants. Good numbers in his rookie season. Between innings, the actor and comedian Jeff Garland led the singing of Take Me Out to the Ball Game, but no reason at all for Cub fans to curb their enthusiasm. Not tonight and not throughout this season. In anticipation of a World Series share, perhaps. Well, you see, Law, he's got a little bit of a herky jerky kind of motion, but his fastball plays, curveball, slider, and changeup. His 2 2 to Fowler runs the count out full. Tomlinson, as we expected, after batting for Gillespie, stays in the game and assumes his position at third base. Down goes Fowler. Foul tipped it back into the glove of Posey. So now here comes Chris Bryant, who, for all he has achieved, and he's one for three tonight, he has an RBI single. He is seven, make it eight, eight for 40. In 11 postseason games in his young career. So he hasn't really busted loose yet in October. Last year, the Cubs won the division series from their nemesis, the Cardinals. Took them in four games, then were swept four straight by the Mets in the LCS. Well, for Bryant, just in his second year, already making adjustments. It's an impressive thing to watch a youngster come in. And everyone knows about his power. Everybody knows that he can hit the long ball, and he certainly has done that in two years. But he's actually tried to create more arc in the zone. What I mean by that is flattening out his swing a little bit so he can stay on more pitches, but this is the home run distribution. Yes, he's not going to hit a ton to right field. It's primarily going to be to left field. But boy, if you make a mistake, with his height and leverage and swing path, He's going to hit a lot more home runs before his career is over. Belt, the only infielder on the right side. Bryant's 39 home runs this year, the most by a Cub since Derek Lee hit 46 in 2005. One and two with Rizzo waiting on deck. Derek Law made his major league debut on April 15th of this season at Dodger Stadium, a game that Clayton Kershaw had started for the Dodgers and Madison Bumgarner for the Giants. And he recorded all three outs in his first inning of major league work on strikeouts Adrian Gonzalez, Howie Kendrick, and Trace Thompson. Auspicious debut. Here's a ball hit hard down the left field line. Question of fair or foul. And the answer does not please Cub fans except for the one who got the souvenir. And Mr. Law tried to sneak something by Chris Bryant. He actually used a quick pitch in his delivery. Watch the, the last part of this ball. Just hooked left. Just barely miss being fair, but you're not going to sneak that by. Any mediocre pitch down in the middle end, middle part of the plate, his swing is suited for that. 
again on two and two. And this one somehow gets by panic. They had him positioned exactly right. They had the shift on. It was hit right at him and he couldn't field it. Well here's what was the pitch before right. I think if you're Derek Law you're going to make sure you don't try this again. See the little quick part and just even though he got out in front that's how strong he is. And then he squares up the next pitch and that's going to be it for Law. This is the pitch later eats up panic. Bruce Bochy not shy about going to the bullpen. Javier Lopez coming in. Derek Law's done. And we're back after this. Here's Javi Lopez, the only active major leaguer with four World Series rings. All three giant champions of recent vintage 2010, 12, and 14, and he was with the Red Sox in 2007. Faces Rizzo. And truly the definition of a specialty pitcher. You saw the 68 appearances, but only 29 and two thirds innings. He's basically just trying to get out one left hander at a time for the most part. Occasional two guys. In this scenario, he's trying to limit the damage that Rizzo can provide at the plate. In 40 of his 68 regular season appearances this year, Javier Lopez faced only one hitter. To your point. Well, here's the, the danger of facing a guy on top of the plate. He's got a lot of areas where it's in the red. That's not good for a pitcher, and the only way. He baits you into throwing the ball inside and just says to you basically you can't do it three times. So the little cold zone up up and in everything else he has a good chance of covering the plate outside of it. Bryant takes off. Ground ball. Bryant safely at second. Rizzo retired. That's the second out of the Cubs seven. Rizzo is now 0 for 4. And in his postseason career, and like Bryant, this is his 11th postseason game, he is 6 for 39.
Bryant who reached on Panic's error is at second with two out. Zobris switches around to the right side. He's one for three had an RBI single back in the first. The Cubs have been charged with three errors tonight. The miscue by Panic a while ago on a hard hit ball by Bryant that really kind of handcuffed him but he was charged with an error correctly. That was the first giant miscue of the night. The Giants have used six pitchers now and the Cubs have used four. Popped up. Posey. And the Cubs are done in the seventh. Six outs left to the Giants. Otherwise they head home down two games to none. That's some of what's transpired to this point. Up come the Giants in the eighth. Down by three. In front of a sellout crowd of 42,392. Look at that last note. Travis Wood hit a home run earlier tonight. Only the second home run by a relief pitcher in postseason history. Which stands to reason. Relievers don't get hit that often. And through most of baseball history, they were coming in late in games, so they'd be pinch hit for. Them. But I'm sure you know that the only other relief pitcher prior to tonight ever to homer in a postseason game was Rosie Ryan of the then New York Giants in 1924 in the World Series against the Washington Senators. To be perfectly honest, I had no idea. <laughs> But that is a fact. At least I am told. Yeah. 
Still one and two to span. Forty two thousand three hundred ninety two as you would expect. Not a seat to be had at Wrigley Field. A chopper Russell charges and throws him out. Well you mentioned that home run and stat cast or by Amazon Web Service is going to tell you about that home run that would hit. Can't be a better jog around the bases. Here are the numbers. Exit velocity like a regular hitter. Launch angle and the distance. Nonetheless he'll never forget this moment in the playoffs. More than likely probably be credited with the win as well. Mm -hmm. If they are able to hold on to this win. Hendricks was literally knocked out of the game by a line drive that got a piece of his forearm although as we mentioned earlier the x-rays were negative and he had not reached five innings Wood came in pitched effectively added to the lead with a home run if it stands up he is likely to be the winning pitcher well for the Giants who are not really built on power belt led the team this year with 17 home runs of course many of that many of those lack of homers have to do with their home ballpark very spacious tough to hit home runs belt goes the opposite way drops it in front of Zobris for a one out single now that hit will probably cause Joe Madden to come out and make another move. Well Rondon who had been their closer is now the setup man. We mentioned that Chapman threw 21 pitches last night but he got an off day tomorrow so he would not be hesitant to use Chapman if he feels the need to do that. But for now it's Rondon. Here are the three postseason games scheduled for tomorrow and where you can find them. The Dodgers and Nats on FS1. They were rained out today. They'll try it again tomorrow. And then Indians, Red Sox, and Rangers, Blue Jays on TBS. Hector Rondon began the season as the Cubs' closer, became the setup man after the acquisition of Aroldis Chapman. 
how has that worked out for him? His ERA was under two before the Chapman deal. It's 7.71 since his role changed. Yeah, a little bit had to do with a forearm injury that they gave him some time off, and they're confident that he can get back to that nastiness. A couple of right handed hitters. Posey, who's now in an 0-2 hole, and then Pence. So Madden with a logical move here. Brandon Crawford waits behind Pence if they can keep the inning going beyond that. Blocked by Contreras. And Belt holds first. Young kid, he can do it all. Very agile. Of course, everyone knows he's got a great arm, but imagine this guy getting called up playing catcher and outfield, different positions. Buster's 0 for 3 is grounded out all three times. Two and two. You just sense the nervousness yesterday in the crowd. They weren't probably thrilled as we watched this pitch miss away about knowing the pedigree of the San Francisco Giants and what they had drawn in this division series. So far so good for the Cubs fans as they are hoping to go up two. Fans. 0 for 4 as he walks away. Now this is just power away at a perfect spot. Even if Posey were to make contact there, I don't know much could be done with the perfect pitch. Aaron Dome. Now Pence, who singled his first time, then fouled out, grounded out. If the Giants should leave here down 0-2, they might take some solace from the fact that there have been nine occasions where in a best of five series, be it the old LCS format, or more recently in the division series, nine times when a team down 0-2 has come back to win the next three. That's out of play. Well, I can tell you this. One of the great environments here, only matched by the great envir environment in San Francisco. Their crowd, that ballpark, will be just as loud and will believe just as much in their team because of what they've seen over the last six years. Well, the Giants have done it. They did it to the Reds in 2012, down 0-2. And the Cubs have had it done to them up 2 0 against the Padres in the LCS in 84. And San Diego won the next three. Well, on our telecast tonight, we're introducing PitchCast, powered by MLB Advanced Media. And you see right there at 98 miles an hour, awfully tough to lay off. But Pence has. Coming in at 97, and Pence fouled it back to the screen. Two and two. Chapman is continuing to warm, and the Cup bullpen could see him in the ninth. Poke towards second. Baez with a little flip to Rizzo. And the Giants are down to three outs and down by three runs.
tonight's division series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And sponsored in part by Lee. Move your league. And by the DQ Five Buck Lunch. Now available. Fly ball to center field. Hold on, all you DQ fans. Bernard Spam makes the catch. As I was saying, the Five Buck Lunch now available all day for a limited time at DQ. Hunter Strickland is the new pitcher for the Giants. Hoping to do something tonight and beyond to forget his so far ghastly postseason resume. A couple of years ago, he allowed six home runs in eight and a third innings of work in the 2014 postseason for the Giants. Jason Hayward doubled flight out struck out. Well, you see the fastball velocity. He definitely has that. It's the command issue and then getting a second pitch over. The breaking ball is a key to not just relying on pouring in fastballs. He will give up his share of fly balls and as you mentioned a few too many home runs in the condensed playoff. Jason Hayward with a drive to center field. Denard Span glides under it. Well, Smoltz, today and tonight marks the 60th anniversary of Don Larson's perfect game in the World Series Game 5 for the Yankees against the Brooklyn Dodgers, October 8, 1956. This has not been a perfect game. There have been some misplays, but the Cubs may leave here with the perfect outcome, the best their fans could hope for. Yeah, the Cubs are doing everything they're supposed to do. After winning a tight game last night, they came out, they took the pressure off of their starting pitcher by getting some runs. And Samarja didn't create any separation between his fastball. And that's one thing you can't do against the Cubs lineup. You've got to be able to throw secondary stuff. He wasn't able to do it, dug a hole for the Giants, and so far, they have not come back. Well, the question is, was there a message in that pitch? Baez's body language says he thinks maybe. The booze from the crowd suggest that some of them think maybe. What do you think? I'm just impressed he got out of the way. He's so agile. He's shaking his head, thinking maybe because of his last couple swings, but. Well, he was Cadillacing it a little bit. Both last night and tonight. Maybe it's old school, but for whatever reason, there's still some in baseball who don't like it. Well, I just think the fact that you're also trying to make the guy a little uncomfortable that has got a pretty free swing and an aggressive swing at the plate. Well, tonight he has walked, struck out swinging. And then what could have been a double was turned into a single when upon replay review he was shown to have come off the bag for a split second while they held the tag on him and he was out although he had beaten the throw. A called strike three so Strickland comes in puts a good bottom of the eighth in the books. Keeps it reasonably close. It is a save situation, and that means Chapman will be called upon to close it out.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Holy cow, the mayor of Rush Street, Harry Carey, would be happy with this season and this series to this point. If you're Brandon Crawford, he can't be too happy, left-handed hitter, having to face the triple-digit heat of Araldus Chapman. Yeah, nobody can be happy facing this kind of triple digits, but the only thing you can hope is that his command is not on and you don't ex expand the zone. Only chance you have. A little pop. Bryant back near the railing. No play. He's been working on a slider as well. We'll have an occasional changeup, but what you're going to see is what you're going to get. You got to think in an area, be as short as you can as a, a hitter, and use his power to your advantage. Crawford's one for three. He had a single in the sixth. The switch hitter Pagan is on deck. Oh and two. After Pagan, it's Kelby Tomlinson, right-handed batter, who came into the game a couple of innings ago as a pinch hitter for Connor Gillespie. Bill Murray among those whooping it up. Hundred and three miles an hour. Too close to take. But maybe too fast to hit. Yeah. Especially when it's that perfectly placed. Here's Pagan. Reached on catcher's interference, single, grounded out. Need two base runners to have even a whisper of a chance. Try to pick one out and get lucky and get a hit early. I still in this situation would make him throw me a strike. Easier said than done, but you got to find a way to get on base. Here it is on one and one. At 102. And see, that's the problem. Those are two pitches that he swung on out of the zone. So when you, you know you got to pull the trigger so soon. I know. That's what makes him so tough. You got to be disciplined beyond belief at the plate. You're starting your swing sooner, which makes it more likely that you'll swing at one outside the zone. He holds the career and single season records for strikeouts per innings pitched. Fouled away. For his career, 15.2 Ks. For nine innings of work in 2014, 17.7, which means he was striking out basically two guys per inning. Oh, well, just never seen an arm like this from the left side. Big guy, athletic, comes come at you straight downhill at 100 plus miles an hour. And his one-two to Pagan. The other thing is he's got such a long stride at the perceived velocity that the hitter's even going to look firmer than what the miles per hour say. Well, he's six four, so he has some length. So it's not quite like Randy Johnson, but you think about Randy Johnson with all of his speed and the great slider on top of it, and then he's six foot ten. He's coming at you like a condor off that mound.
Chapman working from the third base side of the rubber. Maybe up to Bumgarner just to keep them alive in a couple of days. And it's Pagan who stays alive by fouling them off against Chapman. And here's the hard part if you're Chapman. You know you're beating them with the fastball. You get sometimes tempted into thinking, well, if I could throw a wrinkle here, a slider, well, what you'll actually do is speed up his bat. When a guy can't get the barrel of the bat out in front after about four straight fastballs, you know you're beating him to the spot. Looks like a change up the way. The change up that everybody else would like to have is their fastball. Yeah, his change up was 92. Enough to make your hair stand up on end. Mine is. Just can't tell as much as him. <laughs> One out, nobody on. And the 2 2 pitch. Line to center, in comes Fowler, he's got it. A little bit better. It can be overlooked with the quality of their starting pitching, the depth of their bullpen, now topped off by Chapman, MVP candidates like Ryan and Rizzo, terrific young players like Baez, but this is one of the best defensive teams we've seen in recent years. Infield and outfield, very, very good with the gloves. Tomlinson. If this holds, the winner is Wood, who gets the victory and a home run. The loss goes to Samarja, who lasted only two innings, and Chapman is looking for the save. Away from a two game lead in a best of five series. And there is that strike. Got him in order. Fan two. Bill Murray among the 43,000 plus smiling. And these fans hoping that when they see their team again, it's for the LCS, not for game five of this division series. Well, at 103 miles an hour, and even a little tail to it. It's everything the Cubs wanted to do. They never trailed. In the two games. Didn't play a perfect game tonight, but let's not forget they have Arietta going in game three. We keep talking about Bumgarner, which is the right thing to do because he's been so unbelievable. Well, if the Giants can prevail in game three, and it will be Bumgarner against Arietta, as you said, the game four matchup. John Lackey against Matt Moore. Yeah, there's just a lot of depth on both teams, and it's coming down to execution, establishing what you want as a starter, hoping your team can create some offense. The Giants have not created much at all. They're going to get to come home and play a different style 
ball with their ballpark being a little bit more spacious. Let's go downstairs to Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Bob. Kyle, the X-rays were negative, but how worried were you when that ball hit you on the forearm? Uh, when it first hit me, you know, I didn't really feel it in the moment, so I tried to recover and make the play. Uh, once I started throwing a little more off the mound, it just was tightening up on me. Uh, the X-rays were negative, though, so hopefully it's just a day-to-day -day thing. See how the feel is over the next couple of days. How was it decided that you would come out of the game? I'm sorry. How was it decided that you would come out of the game? Uh, it, we were having a discussion, Joe and I, just seeing where the feel was at with my fastball. And when I was just releasing it, uh, I just noticed the movement. I wasn't going to be able to trust it. So he told me, you know, if there's any inclination of anything, you'd rather take me out, you know, get to the treatment right now uh, and go for the future. Obviously, the bullpen today was unbelievable. You know, they, uh, they won that game. Now, Kyle, you mentioned that you're day to day. Do you expect to pitch again in the postseason? 100%, yeah. I mean, we, I'm going to do anything I can. You know, obviously, since the X-rays were negative, I'm happy about that. Just going to go with the feel. It feels good right now. So hopefully it's a couple days, and hopefully I can make my next start. All right, last question. Let's talk about something happier. Yeah. Your two-run single on the first pitch off Samarja. What are you going to tell your grandkids about that hit? Yeah, you know, I was just trying to get a pitch somewhere over the plate. I knew he was probably going to challenge me early. Uh, you can't get deep in the count against him. So going out there as a pitcher, you know, I was looking for a safety squeeze, maybe something like that. but. Gave me a swing away, so I just tried to put a good swing on it first pitch. Kyle, thank you. Yeah. Feel good. All right, Bye. Back to you. All right, Ken. Thanks a lot. We're going to take a look at the play that ended Hendricks' night prematurely. Pagan's the hitter. And right around his belt buckle, but it also got a portion of his right forearm and knocked him out of the game. He was able to chase the ball down but Pagan beat it for a hit and taking no chances they removed him from the game and as Kenny just said and Hendricks confirmed x-rays were negative. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves here the Giants still could bounce back a lot of things can happen but if and when underline if underline when if and when the Cubs make it to the World Series it's not just a big baseball story it is a national story even casual fans. People who don't know a sacrifice fly from a squeeze play will be into it if the Cubs make it to the World Series. Yeah, no doubt this crowd, this city's on fire. But they still got a hurdle, and that's uh, getting through the champs, right? The champs who haven't lost an elimination game in forever, it seems like. And that's going to start with San Francisco and Madison, Madison Bumgarner. Believe this, the Giants do not think this series is over. It resumes on Monday, Arietta against Bumgarner. At AT&T, our next division series broadcast will be Monday. Jim Cott will join me in LA. Game three of the Dodgers and the Nats. And coming up, it's MLB Tonight, presented by Evan Williams Berman with Greg Amsinger, Kevin Millar, and Dan Plesac. For John Smoltz, Ken Rosenthal, and our entire crew, Bob Costas saying so long from Wrigley Field in Chicago. And thanks for watching MLB Network's division series telecast, presented by Geico. The Cubs win at 5-2 and lead the series. Do nothing.